Hello, my friends. Long time no see. I know it's been a while since I've checked in over here or really in social media in general. I hope that you know by now that if I stop posting for a little bit, I'm not really gone. I'm always thinking about YouTube and all of you. Um, sometimes I just go through slumps. This time I have set myself up for success by filming while I've been gone. Uh, so I had videos scheduled versus usually when I leave, I just like film a video, edit it and post it. And then I'm like, well, fuck now I, I'm already behind. I have nothing to go for next week. But this time she's got shit ready. Uh, but I know uh, it's been since May. I hope that you all had a wonderful summer. I hope you don't mind the kind of more dark vibes we got today. It's not a lot of light. Just trying to do some cozy vibes, you know? I've also got some wine. This is a Lambrusco. It was the only Lambrusco that my grocery store had and it was, I believe, $6. So I'm a little bit nervous to try it. That honestly tastes like grape juice. It's not as bubbly as some of the other Lambruscos that I've had, but it's got a little bit of a mouthfeel to it. All right, enough of an intro there. Today we are discussing my September reads, and I'm so excited to share these books with you. I read nine books in September, I believe. Let's see, I've got it. Eight books. Eight books. Kind of all over the place. Actually, they're not really. I've got basically all thrillers, one romance, and one self-help book. So first up, we have Mirrorland by Carol Johnstone. This book, I feel like, has been kind of making the rounds in the hyped community. I first heard about it from one of my mom's students' mothers. Uh, this is actually her copy. <laughs> and my mom gave it to me because she's like, this woman said it was really good, but you know me, I don't like a lot of scary stuff, so can you read it first and let me know how you feel about it? So I did, and I do have thoughts about this book. This book follows uh, the like twin trope that you can see a lot in thrillers. Let me just tell you what it's about. So there's Kat and there's Elle, and they grew up in Scotland, I believe in Edinburgh, and they uh, lived in this house with their mother and their grandfather, and they had this world of their own creation called Mirrorland. And that used to be their life up until one night when something pretty crazy happened and then they started their new life. They were in foster care up until the age of 18 when Kat went to move away to California following a falling out with her sister. Uh, now it's many years later and Elle, who still lives in Scotland, has gone missing. So Kat needs to go back to Scotland and she takes up residence in her sister's house that she shares with her husband. And that house happens to be the very house from their childhood. As Kat is spending time in this house, she is recovering memories and discovering things about their childhood. Like, oh, maybe it wasn't all imaginary. Or like, wait, wh who was that? And as she's doing this, she is finding little clues about where Elle is around the house that she believes could only be left by Elle. What's going on here? So this book was good. I enjoyed it. I had a fun time with it. It took me a while to read. I There wasn't really any point wherein I was super sucked into it. I definitely wanted to know what was happening, but I, I didn't have that edge of my seat. Like, I gotta figure out what's going on feeling with this book. I also didn't find it that scary, but maybe it was just all of the imaginary stuff. And I mean, yeah, you don't know what is imaginary and what isn't. So I, maybe I just assumed that everything was imaginary. I don't know. There was something about it that just didn't quite hit home with me. I gave this three stars. So definitely not a bad book by any means. Um, it just didn't quite click with me. But I will say if you're a fan of uh, the type of stories where is this real or is it not? And, um, you know, forgotten repressed memories, this could definitely be for you. Also, if, you know, you like reading about twins. So there were a lot of twists and turns in this one. So that's that. All right, let's move on. The next book that I read was Girls Like Us by Christina Alger, or perhaps Alger. I believe I gave this one three stars or maybe I didn't rate it at all. I didn't rate it at all because I didn't finish this book. I DNF'd this one. I believe I got like 150 pages in, which is a solid chunk of the book. And then I just didn't care. I really didn't care. So I skipped to the end and I found out who was responsible. Hi, editing Katie here. Uh, just to give you a warning, Kevin is about to jump 
uh, onto the couch. And editing, I honestly jumped. It scared me so much. So I wanted to give you a warning that he's about to appear over my shoulder. And I have no reaction to it. So, all right. Yeah, one of the first times I've ever done that with a book. But, you know, it, it was fun because I got to figure out the mystery and I didn't have to sit through a book that I wasn't quite enjoying. This book is told from the detective's point of view and I didn't really like that. Usually I think when I read thrillers, they're from um, someone kind of involved on a personal level with the case, not actually like in a professional way. I think also there was something about this, like I thought that it was gonna be one thing and then it wasn't. Uh, this is about Nell. Uh, she is a FBI agent and uh, she's called back to her hometown where her father was a police officer. Um, he's just died. So she's there and while there, she ends up becoming involved in the case of the brutal murder of two young women. And as she's like investigating, she's thinking like, oh my God, could my dad have done this? What's going on here? Um, you also know going into it, her mother was murdered um, when Nell was a child. So I guess I thought it was just gonna be a little bit more creepy and it just kind of felt like a procedural, which just was not quite the vibe I was going for. Like, I feel like if this was a TV show, I would have enjoyed it. But for whatever reason, reading it didn't quite do it for me. This is probably like a two star read for me. It's just a personal thing for me. I don't like rating books two stars or lower on Goodreads. Just right now, three is kind of where I stop. <laughs> I think it's just I worry about hurting the author's feelings. But here I am on YouTube telling you that I would rate this two stars. Um, so I. I don't understand my mind, but that's what it is. Also, I mean, absolutely no judgment if you one star or two star, you you review however you want to review. Okay, next up, I read Invisible Girl by Lisa Jewell. And this was another one that was just kind of meh for me. I liked it, it just didn't quite pan out to be what I wanted it to be or what I thought it was gonna be. Um, but it was definitely an interesting book. It almost felt like a literary uh, thriller where it's a lot more focused, I felt, on like character development and um, it's slower paced than a uh, like plot-driven commercial thriller. This book has, I believe, three points of view. I don't think it's four, um, but it follows Sapphire, who goes missing, so you're getting her point of view from the past. Then you have Owen, who uh, lives on the same street as this uh, family whose mother in that family, you also get uh, her point of view. Owen has just been um, released from his job following some sexual misconduct um, allegations. And so he ends up kind of going on some incel forums and starts to maybe go down not a great path. And <laughs> then Kate, who is the mother, um, lives right nearby to Owen, notices that he's creepy and oh my God, this girl has just gone missing. Um, but uh, their family, the Fours family, actually has quite a few ties to Sapphire and there might be some secrets hidden there too. So where did Sapphire go? Is she alive? Is she dead? Did someone in the Fours family have something to do with it? Did Owen have something to do with it? Who knows? I liked the way that this story wrapped up. It was just different than what I was expecting, which isn't a bad thing, but didn't really leave me feeling like a five star or four star. I believe I also gave this three stars. Yes, I did. They've got three stars right now. Let's continue. Oh, actually, next up we've got a five star read and that is His and Hers by Alice Feeney. I'm not going to say a whole lot about my thoughts on this because I actually did film a reading vlog of me reading this along with the next book that I will be talking about that'll be coming your way very soon. Truly, not when I said like Devil's Night would be coming soon. This is, it's already posted, it's just scheduled. Um, so it really will be in like a few days. But this was a five star read for me. I absolutely loved it. It kept me guessing up until the very end, obsessed. So this book follows Jack and Anna, I believe is her name. Anna is a journalist and she's actually just been like demoted at her job as a reporter on, I think the BBC News. And so uh, when word gets out that there has been a murder in her hometown, she's like, all right, I'll go and cover this and maybe I'll get like the inside scoop and get my job back. The lead detective on the case is none other than her ex-husband. There goes Kevin. Jack, this would be the his point of view. Essentially throughout this book, Jack and Anna are kind of unsure of each other. They're like, do you have something to do with this? 
do you have something to do with this? So is it either one of them or is it an outside force trying to get them against each other? I really like this book because it sounds like it's a book that's going to be built on miscommunication and it's not, which I love. Like the, the characters like talk to each other. Like Jack will be like, why do you have this? And Anna will be like, mm -hmm. like instead of being like, I know that she's responsible, but I'm going to keep it to myself and just come up with all these theories. Like they actually talk which I liked. But there's a lot of weird stuff going on. There's um, like boarding school stuff. You get some stuff from the past, uh, from Anna's point of view. And uh, it, it's, it's really good. I really enjoyed it. And it truly kept me guessing up until the very end. I loved it. Five stars. You'll, I'm talking a lot about it and you can see more of my thoughts in uh, the reading vlog soon. Okay, next up we have The Perfect Guests by Emma. Rouse. I feel like I always say her last name wrong. Let's hope that I got it right this time. This is another one I read in my reading vlog, so I won't give you all my thoughts, but I believe I gave this three, three or four stars? Three stars. This uh, book takes place in two different time periods. You've got the past where, um, oh my god, what is her name? I can't remember the woman's name, uh, but she comes to this estate to live with this family because they're, um, youngest daughter needs like companionship. So her and the daughter are hanging out, whatever, they're having a good time. And something tragic happens in the family. And uh, the woman ends up going, like living life apart from this family. So that's the past. And then the present is, it follows Sadie, who is a struggling actress, and she has just gotten hired to participate in this murder mystery party at you guessed it, the same estate. Essentially, there is this tragedy that happened in the past that you're like waiting to find out what happened, what's gonna happen. And then you have the present where Sadie's at this murder mystery party and there's some funky shit going on. Like, oh my God, their phones don't work. And um, all of the people with cars have left, so they're stranded there. And like, some people are starting to feel sick and what's going on here? So I really liked it. It just ended up kind of being something that I wasn't expecting it to be. Okay, let's move on. Next up, we have Conclave by Penelope Douglas. Um, I'm almost at the end of the Devil's Night series, nearly. I'm reading Nightfall right now. I'm still filming a vlog, but part of me just feels like I should just do a sit down video and talk about it because I've been filming this vlog since March. Um, <laughs> so the amount of footage that I have is not so crazy. Um, and it's also not very good footage. I feel like it's kind of boring and I don't know. Uh, I'll figure it out, I guess. But I read Conclave, which was a nice breezy read. If you aren't aware, this is the third and a half book in the Devil's Night series. Um, it's a novella. It was fine. You know, I mean, it's, it wasn't, it was very much a novella, like not a whole lot happened. Um, finally found out some stuff of like why certain people are acting certain ways in the last two books. It was good. I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I'm kind of falling off the Devil's Night train the more that I read. Uh, I loved Kill Switch, but I feel like that just kind of ended it for me. I'm like, all right, I'm good, I'm done. I don't need to read anymore. But I, I am, and uh, we'll see. We'll see how Nightfall treats me. I've heard from a lot of people that they just feel like it's too long, and I can, I can see myself feeling that way too. It's like 700 fucking pages or something, which is, that's a lot. It's a lot. Side note, I'm currently reading Imaginary Friend by Stephen Chbosky, which is also like 700 pages. And I also just want that to like speed up, but I'm also really enjoying it. And I'm so freaked out all the time. Okay, let's talk about the next book, which was, uh, let me grab it. One by One by Ruth Ware. If you have been watching this channel for a while, you know I am a big Ruth Ware fan, although a lot of times her endings are kind of, uh, they fall short for me. Uh, this one didn't. Um, this ending took me by surprise. I think I realized who uh, the, the bad person in this book was, like just when I was supposed to, maybe like a chapter before. Uh, but I really liked that because I felt like I was really in it with the other guests. This book um, follows, it, it's from Aaron and Liz's point of view. And Erin uh, works at this ski chalet in the French Alps. She's worked there for years now, likes it, all that jazz. But you can tell that like, she's got some shit in her past that she's ignoring and that you don't know about. Then we have Liz, who is traveling to this ski resort um, with her former 
tech company. And you know that there's some bad blood there, but you don't really know why. And you know that Liz would like truly rather be anywhere else. But uh, just as it happens, she ends up being stuck there for quite some time because there's an avalanche that happens and they all get snowed in. And like there's a ton of damage and rescue teams are, you know, on delay because there's so much shit that happened. The people at the resort are like, you know what, it's it's fine, we have food, we have water right now, and the, the rescue team will come eventually. But as time goes on, uh, people start dying and the rescue team is still not there. So there's a murderer in their midst and they don't know who it is uh, and help is far away. It's very much if you like, uh, and then there were none by Agatha Christie. It's got those vibes. I, I really enjoyed this. I believe I gave this four stars. It was a fun time. Next up we have Captured by Erica Stevens. I posted about this book a while back on my Instagram stories. I think I said something like, this book is giving me all the Twilight feels and I'm living for it. And uh, boy, did it give me those feels. It was <laughs> too reminiscent of uh, vampire books back in the day. And while I was reading it, I was like, God, this just feels so like derivative. I've read this before. I've read this story so many times. This is all the same tropes. Like I'm getting bored here. And then I, I, for some reason, I thought it was published in like 2019. It was published in 2012. So. <laughs> It makes perfect sense why it relied on those tropes because at that time they were still like fresh and fun. But yeah, reading it in 2021, a bit of a different feeling I have for it. I will say, I think if I had read this book back when I was like 15, I would have been obsessed with it. Uh, essentially, this book takes place in a world where vampires rule and humans are their blood slaves. Um, and those who do not want to be blood slaves uh, live in the forest and are part of this rebellion. And our main gal, Arya, um, is captured by vampires during a raid and she gets taken to the city and she's like put up for auction. And wouldn't you know, the prince of vampires ends up buying her to be his personal blood slave. And you don't really know why, um, but you know, Arya starts to like almost immediately like feel things for this prince. I think his name's Braith, yeah. And uh, they're both like, why are we attracted to each other? What's going on? This was so weird. Um, Arya can't read. Braith teaches her to read. Arya uses a bow. You know, she comes in all dirty and then she gets all glammed up and then it's like, oh my God, you're beautiful. There's insta-love. There's, you know, the 900 year old vampire falling in love with the 16 year old girl. Stuff like that, uh, which that was the shit that I ate up when I was younger. Now, eh. It was fun. I don't think I'm gonna continue on with the series, but I will say if you are craving something that just is gonna take you back to that time, um, or if you haven't read a lot of those old vampire books, you might enjoy this. I will say though, the age gap really bothered me, <laughs> which is weird because Coldest Girl in Cold Town is one of my favorite books of all time. And there is a massive age gap in that because Gabriel is, you know, hundreds of years old and Tana is, I think, 18, 17. But for whatever reason, it feels like it works there because Tana is just my everything. And Arya, even though she's not naive, felt very naive and young. And Braith felt very old. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And last but not least, I read uh, The Life-Changing Magic of Not Giving a Fuck? Yes, by Sarah Knight. Subtitle, how to stop spending time you don't have with people you don't like doing things you don't wanna do. I enjoyed this book. Um, I don't, I didn't rate it. Um, probably like a three star read for me. I listened to the audio of this and it was, it was good. I enjoyed it. I will say though, I, there were, it was a lot of repetition. Um, I didn't read a whole lot of self help books. This is honestly like one of my first. And I don't know if they're all like that where you're like, okay, I get it. Like you don't have to keep on telling me the same thing. I do think if you watch Sarah Knight's TED Talk, uh, you get basically the same information. And I think it's only like 12 minutes long. So I did enjoy it, but I didn't find it like revolutionary. I mean, it's definitely helpful for people who are people pleasers and want people to like them and never want to come across as an asshole. It does, it gives helpful tips for that, um, which is me. I definitely feel that, but yeah, I don't know. It was fine. Okay. And that's it. And what great timing. I'm nearly done with my wine. If you have made it to this point in the video, thank you so much for watching and for spending some time with me. I missed you, I love you, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys. <laughs>